Hey everyone, and welcome to Top Think. Today we're going to learn about 10 subtle signs of a psychopath. Now, let's begin. Number 1. Social Domination How do psychopaths interact with the world? Do they communicate the same way you do? A 2019 review from the Journal of Psycholinguistic Research asked the same questions. To find an answer, they compiled 34 different studies on psychopathic communication. But what did they find? Just think about an average conversation. Most conversations are friendly and casual. Two friends chatting over coffee. Co-workers poking fun at their boss. Strangers exchanging bits of small talk. But some conversations are more competitive. In business settings, for example, you may wrestle for power and status. If you say too much, your opponent gets the better of you. So, you choose your words very carefully. A psychopath views every conversation as a competition. They crave social dominance. They need the power in every relationship they make. So, like a business transaction, they lay traps, withhold information, and manipulate other people. Social interactions are, in the mind of a psychopath, a hierarchy of power and status, and the psychopath wants to be on top. So, how can you recognize this hunger for power in another person? When talking to a psychopath, you may feel like you're on the back foot. They may one-up you at every turn, they may catch every mistake you make, or point out every tiny contradiction. If you mess up, they'll let you know, because your mistakes give them power. Number 2. Mass Generalizations To a psychopath, everyone is their enemy, so they're always searching for reasons to criticize their community, their country, or the entire world. Alright, let's say you see someone throw an empty can on the ground. How would you react? You may think to yourself, this person littered, so they must be careless and disrespectful. You, like most people, judge individuals for their actions, but a psychopath can generalize anything. This comes from the same 2019 review. Psychopaths are prone to overgeneralization, especially if it's something negative. Instead of judging a singular person, they criticize larger groups and communities. If one person litters, for example, they don't blame the individual. They assume the whole city is careless and disrespectful. Listen for these huge generalizations. Pay attention to radical assumptions and narrow-minded opinions because psychopaths assume the world is full of terrible people. Number 3. Persuasive Disfluencies Do psychopaths talk differently than most people? This comes from a 2016 study in the Journal of Criminal Justice and Behavior. In this study, researchers interviewed a handful of psychopaths. Looking at these interviews, researchers looked for patterns in phrasing and word choice. So what did they find? Are there differences in the way a psychopath speaks? Researchers noticed a spike in language disfluencies. Disfluencies are breaks or disruptions in your speech. Some people stutter. Other people use filler words like um or like. Disfluencies usually signify stress or anxiety. The average person, for example, uses more filler words when they're nervous. Their mind races, their heart rate skyrockets, so they struggle to express themselves clearly. Oh, but a psychopath does things differently. During interviews, psychopaths used a specific kind of disfluency. They didn't stutter, they didn't fill their speech with likes and ums. In fact, researchers found very few stress-related words in their speech. Instead, a psychopath will use phrases like, you know, or to be honest. These are still disfluencies, but these disfluencies serve a different purpose. They don't fill space or buy time, they're a subtle form of persuasion. Psychopaths may use these phrases to manipulate their listeners and gain power in the conversation. Number 4. Personal Pronouns Our 2016 study uncovered another important sign of psychopathy. During their interviews, most participants talked about multiple people. They discussed their family and their friends. They talked about people from work. They told stories about others and referenced them by name. Psychopaths, on the other hand, mentioned only themselves. They made very few references to other people. They rarely brought up family or friends, and they showed barely any emotional attachment to others. The most compelling piece of evidence is their use of pronouns. Researchers counted exactly how many pronouns each interviewee used, and which ones were used the most often. It turns out psychopaths talked about themselves way more than most people. 
They used so many personal pronouns that researchers call this subtle sign a reliable predictor of psychopathy. So the next time you're having a conversation, pay attention to the pronouns. How often do people say I and me? There's nothing wrong with talking about yourself, but a psychopath won't talk about anything else. Number five, temporary tools. How do psychopaths treat their loved ones? In our 2019 review, researchers explored how psychopaths view the people in their life. Just think about this. Why do you make friends with other people? Maybe you enjoy their company. You may gather energy from the enthusiasm of others. You may want to share your passions with people who understand you. There are many reasons to make friends, but psychopaths only have one. They bond with others because they need something from them. It may be a small favor. It could be a connection or a social boon. There's always something to gain. If you have nothing to offer a psychopath, they'll abandon the relationship because they view friends and family as tools. As soon as you're not useful, a psychopath will throw you away. Number six, inappropriate emotions. Do you know someone who laughs at sad stories? Someone who cries when they're supposed to be smiling? Psychopaths rarely express their emotions. They prefer to be emotionally detached. Many psychopaths discuss difficult topics without showing an ounce of emotion. Their emotional detachment is also a sign of psychopathy. But what happens when they do show their emotions? All right, let's say your friend tells you a sad story from their childhood. You're on the verge of tears, but they're not crying at all. In fact, they're laughing. We call this an inappropriate emotion. When a psychopath has a reaction, their outward emotions may contradict their inward experiences. In other words, they may laugh when they want to cry. Number seven, biological needs. Everyone has social and emotional needs. You long for companionship. You crave physical affection. You feel frustrated when someone ignores you because you want to be heard. These are all valid needs that people feel on a regular basis. But a psychopath avoids their social or emotional needs. Many psychopaths pretend those needs don't exist. They talk only about their basic evolutionary needs. They need food. They need water. They need money. They view the world through concrete desires, not social or emotional problems. So why do they think like this? Because psychopaths want to appear strong at all times. They want people to see them as fearless and sturdy. To a psychopath, expressing your emotions is dangerous. It's a sign of weakness. That's why psychopaths avoid their emotions as often as they can. Number eight, strategic avoidance. Do you know someone who leaves out important parts of their stories? Psychopaths use this trick to bait people in. It gives them power in the conversation. By leaving out details, they're holding all the cards. They have something you want to hear, and they decide when you hear it. In the mind of a psychopath, this is one way to achieve social dominance. Let's say something important happened on the news. You didn't hear about it, so you ask your friend, but they dance around the issue, leaving out the most important details. You keep asking for more, but they keep stringing you along. This person is playing with you. They know what you want, but they don't want to give it to you. It's a subtle form of manipulation, and it's common among psychopaths. Number 9. Self-Contradictions Have you ever heard someone contradict themselves? Psychopaths will contradict their own opinions. They disprove and go back on their own arguments seconds after making them. For example, a psychopath might say, money can never buy you happiness. Then, a couple of minutes later, they're obsessing about how much money they make. Many psychopaths don't realize they're contradicting themselves because their opinions are impulsive and temporary. Psychopaths have no problem with lying, so they say whatever strikes them in the moment, not what they really believe. Unfortunately, it's difficult to call them out. If you say something, a psychopath may get defensive immediately. They'll turn the argument on its head and they'll aim all their frustration at you. So keep an eye out for major contradictions. See how many times their opinions flop back and forth. It may happen more than you realize. Number 10. Emotional Landslides Psychopaths bottle up their emotions. They stuff their feelings down for months or years at a time. They ignore their problems. They run away from conflicts. And they tune out anyone who tells them to change. Eventually, those bottled up emotions have to escape. And when they do, the outcome can be catastrophic. 
Let's call this an emotional landslide. An emotional landslide may be triggered by something small and insignificant, but that little moment releases a cascade of powerful feelings. A psychopath may get unreasonably angry. They'll insult you, yell at you, or get physical with you. They may spiral into a slump of despair, crying for hours on end. These landslides can be frightening, uncomfortable, and dangerous. If someone you know experiences emotional landslides, they might be a psychopath. Hey, thank you for watching Top Think and be sure to subscribe because more incredible content is on the way.